Didn't you launch a delivery app that you were working on before the pandemic? What's the yeah. story behind we, that? Just by luck. Um, this is this guy came in. This Israeli guy. Um, he's a programmer. Heard of us, and he was like, oh, "I want to do this." this, this. So we turned around, we looked at each other. This is before the pandemic. We had no idea. Like we just look, Deliveroo, Just Eat, Uber Eats, everything. You know, everyone's doing it. We're not ready to open another shop yet. Believe me, running the one shop's hard enough. I couldn't imagine having to do it twice. So we thought, you know, it's quite a. You said about expansion. It's kind of like having a shop, but not, right? It's like having another shop, but not. You can reach somebody over here and you can reach somebody over there, but you can still do it from home. So yeah, lovely. Good idea. Okay, let's see what you've got. Well, you had had a lot of bugs in it. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry if you've ever ordered from us and had a problem. <laughs> uh, so this is a long interview. How do you sit back? Yeah, so he, he approached us and he said, blah, 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 blah. I can do this. I can do that. I can do that. We met with him. We, we liked the guy. We, we liked him more than his product. His product's much better now. So we struck a deal. We said, look, you want to enter and penetrate this market. You're, you know, you're nobody. I can go to delivery. I can go here. I can go there. He offered us a good commission and also a little bit more bespoke thing. To most people, it looks like a Bible Bay app made by Bible Bake, right? I mean, I don't know if you've used it or looked at it. Yeah, I've looked at it. You'd probably assume, yeah, we built it. It's all ours. No, it's this guy. He's, it's his like small company, but it like showcases us as being like, the owners kind of thing so it's very similar to delivery but not from your perspective is there a reason why you didn't want to go on delivery because on delivery for instance they already have that existing market so you don't have to market yourself the way you had to do yeah it's much easier right yeah low commission but then also a lot more work you know yeah. to be honest i think sometimes it's more work than the bakery i'm phoning up complaints that this went wrong that went wrong his name's Omer. Omer, it's not working. What's wrong? <laughs> so one minute. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I fixed it. It's like, I think you sure you fixed it? Yeah, I fixed it. Two minutes later, there's a problem. Omer, it's not fixed. Da, 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 da. I fixed it. Are you sure? Yeah, it's not fixed. <laughs> but the guy got his food and he's happy. You know, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> a little bit of schmoozing. You know, I have to talk to him on the phone and call him down. Hey, I'm really sorry. You know, it's not our fault. And this happened. I'll give you this. I'll do that. Thank God, only a few times I got sworn at. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is I'm trying. I can't please everyone, you know. Yeah. How do you get the word out? We use Facebook advertising. You can do Facebook ads and, and Instagram mm. and all that. So we, we did it that way. We hired, um, we hired a um, marketing company to do like a bit of a campaign for us. So they got the, the word out in a big way. I must say it was like, we couldn't cope actually. It was like, like a lot, a lot of orders. Due to the bugs, it slowly went down and down. And down. You know, <laughs> some people didn't like it. <laughs> All right, we tried. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say we failed. It's okay. It's not amazing. It's okay. Yeah. It's become stagnant. I think the main problem is I don't know if you've used it. The delivery fee is a bit high. I haven't used it because I could just walk to your place. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. yeah. To be honest, you're probably better off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Um, yeah. So the delivery fee is a bit high because look. Deliveroo charge them, um, for example, if we want some delivery, they'd want like 45% of um, the turnover. So from that is how they pay their drivers and their advertising and all those bits and pieces. So really, you think you're paying two pound delivery. Do you believe Tony, the bike driver, has gone from my shop all the way to your house for two pounds? He's not worked half an hour for two pounds. Who does that? I've uh, gone benefits better. You know, are you crazy? I'm not driving around the whole of London for five quid. It's not happening. So we can't do that. You know, we pay the drivers what they need to be paid. You know, not our slaves. They need to earn money. It's, it's, it's their job. So we charge you a bit more. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but we're working out something to try and sort to fix that. Do you work with charities and how are those arrangements like? Yeah, look, people come in and ask us. We're always happy. Look, I'll be frank here. I don't think I'm greedy guards or anything. People go, or, 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 or being funny or difficult. Walk into Tesco's, yeah? Imagine walking to Tesco's and saying, I want this, I want that. I've been coming into your shop for 10 years. I want a discount. I want this. You wouldn't dream of it and they wouldn't entertain it. But for some reason, people come and ask us all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we're not turning over billions and billions like Tesco's, you know, far from it. We don't get a lot of profit on our products. Having said that, we're not starving. We're okay. You know, I'm not going to lie either. I'm not going to turn and say, oh, take you for an idiot. We're poor. I'm not poor. So yeah, we give. We give all the time. Whoever asks, 99% of the time we give. Some people come in and are a bit cheeky. I might say like, you know, I want your finger because, you know, you've got another four. 
well, no, that's not, I need all five, <laughs> you know, but if you want something, I'll give you. Yeah, 100%. We give a lot of people. Um, there's a school, they come in every other day. We give them bagels and bread for the school to have like a tea or, you know, other some schools do like a snack at a break time or whatever. Here's your snack. Nearly every week they come. And um, there's a local church, they do like some gathering, I don't know, some kind of alcohol anonymous meeting or I, I don't know what it is they're doing. They're doing something. Okay, here's for some food. Another school got in touch with us, the member of the PTA, they want to do fundraising for schools. You know, a lot of schools are having, the government's not giving people enough money around here. So, okay, have some stuff to sell at your PTA, no problem. You know, yeah, we give, but no problem. You know, we're not greedy. Just don't ask for my leg. <laughs> That's one thing that got you a lot of publicity over the pandemic, which is the Deacon Judges of Cambridge came to visit. What was that like? Was I wish my like? dad was around. Like, Aww. wow. Yeah, wow. My uncle was like, we were all honoured. But obviously, because my uncle was started it with my dad, like, it was like, is it Sammy? you know, imagine after all these, um, my other uncle, um, and Sammy. Well, if Sammy, Sammy is a comedian like my dad. He said, what took them so long? <laughs> you know, I've been here 50 years. <laughs> I was joking. He was like, you see his face. He was like, you know, touched. It was heartwarming. Yeah. Um, they're lovely people. They really, really like. They seem. Look, maybe they're taught and 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 they're you know they they're groomed to be that way. But they actually seem to me is I think it's hard to fake. Really genuine, nice. Like you can tell from the questions they asked, they were really interested, involved. You know, they they were helping out, and you can tell they were, they were like. Happy to be hands-on. There wasn't like, oh, I'm not allowed to do this. They were like, yeah, come on, another one, let's go. You know, they they were lovely. Yeah, and what an honor, you know, for 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 the royalty to come and say like and acknowledge this place is, you know, part of London, or or what have you. Like, wow, what what what, what can you say? Is it the first time they went to that part of London? I have no idea. I don't follow them. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you know, that'd be <laughs> probably not, but maybe. I don't know. Amazing. They were there for, I think, to understand what was happening in London, right? Yes. It was, it was COVID related. How is it affecting people and the community, etc.? I think they went to several communities and this was their east end of London like section. And we were like the, the main part of it, which is really it's lovely. You know, we were there we were like the example company which is like great. Do you feel like there was a boost in terms of publicity for you after that? A hundred percent, you know, I mean, how could there not be? It was very welcomed. And I think they knew that they knew they were going to bring a bit of life back to the, the area and the country and whatnot. They wanted, I think their aim really was to like, let's get the economy moving. Let's get people back to life. You know, it's like the, wear your mask, clean your hands and let's go. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. stop hiding in your homes kind of thing. Let's get London rolling again. And yeah, they I think they did a great job because there was definitely a huge boost. It may have peaked and died down a bit, but it was, you know, it was felt and noticeable. It was lovely and, and needed. And how's the business now? You said that it's get, gotten better, but it's not like it was before. Yeah, it's up and down. You know, look, yeah. every time every time there's another scare, another variant, another this, another that, you know. The, the media is very good at scaremongering. I, look, I, I, it looks like that to me. I mean, so, some the way they go on about certain things, they could be a little bit more realistic. It's not like someone sneezed, someone died. You, you know, they take it to the extreme, don't they? You know, you might hear a little whisper somewhere. All of a sudden, there's an earthquake. But yeah, so we notice like something gets said, bang, dip. You, you've got a good three week dip before people get brave and forget and come back out into the world again. So it's like, it's like this continuously, you know? And then we've just had Christmas and then prior to Christmas, the other Astra, AstraZeneca, no, which one was it? The, the other variant came out, AstraZeneca is the jab. Delta? Then another variant came out. Hmm? Was it Delta? No, the one after Delta, what's the other one? Omicron? Omicron, Omicron's out now. It was just prior to Christmas, right? So they were like, oh, the, the you know, be careful, work from home again. You know, look, we're, we're in the city. A lot of our customers at lunchtime are people that are working in the offices. For ages and ages and ages, everyone was working from home for like a good year or so. You know, only very recently, companies said like, start coming back to the office now. Like, it's you know, we're, we're fine. And we were starting to get back to normal. And all of a sudden, Omicron came in and everyone's back at home again. Our lunch period has gone like that. I, I started... 
I hired an extra person as it was starting to get building up again. And then Omicron hit. And now I've had to tell that person, look, I'm sorry, we're just not busy enough. I have to reduce your, I've kept them on because they're like, you know, they're, they're really nice. I really like them and I can see the potential for the future. But, and you know, everyone needs to work. There's not a lot of work out there. But I said, to her, I'm going to have to reduce your hours a little bit because she's standing there like this in the shop, looking at the wall. I was like, you, you can see yourself like, I'm sorry, you know, but I'm not lying, look. So she's like, no, I understand. I'm really sorry the shop's doing this. So I said, okay, work here and work there. And again, you know, found bits and pieces for her, but yeah, it's gone down again. And ho- well, I mean, hopefully once all of this is behind people and the offices start to pick up, you know, it's, it's, it's just a waiting game. It's just up and down, up and down. You don't know where you stand. One week I'm ordering 10 kilos of beef. The next week I'm ordering two kilos of beef, like, you just have to move with it. Yeah. And do you think in terms of like what you anticipate this business going in the future, like five, 10 years, or is it just too far and you're just living day by day? What can we expect from you? I, 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 we, we hope to. So we've noticed over this, a lot of people, because they're working from home, are buying plane bibles a lot more. To feel their own feelings um, at home. Working from home and making, rather than going, they're still buying our bibles, but not, we make money off, off the sandwiches. Our plane bibles, like, you know, we were selling them at like a one, like 30p each. You know, do you know how much work there is to make 30p? Believe me, it's not worth 30p. But, you know, we made money from selling sandwiches. There's, you know, there's, a, there's a mark up there, like any, like, you know, going to a restaurant to eat costs you 25 pounds at home, it costs you five. You know, it's just, just the way it is, right? If you want the service, it costs a bit more. So we're making money of sandwiches, but now we're selling the sandwiches. People buying more of our plain bagels. So we've still got people in and out the door, but the profit's not there anymore. You know, it's harder. So what do you do? Try and sell more plain bagels, right? <laughs> so we hope to increase productivity and like increase wholesale and stuff like that. And, you know, please God, one day you'll see us in, 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 in other shops. We we'll hope to supply other shops with stuff and, 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 keep our employees going and give them work to do and you know diversify a little bit yeah <clears throat> well you think of increasing the price i mean 30p is incredibly we had to. affordable yeah no we had to not we wouldn't we only did because of after all of this plus brexit and plus everything else that every other excuse i call it that people have told me yeah oh we have to charge more for the flour the electricity to run our ovens and our machinery i don't know how you living in london still no i'm not but it's incredibly high. When you come back, you're going to get a shock it. because electric is like double, yeah? You're going to have a proper electric shock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it just costs more to make. So to keep the same amount of profit, we had to put our prices up a little bit, yeah. Well, thank you, Daniel, so much for your time. I love to end all of my interviews with the same question. So the first one is this. Do you feel like after all this, doing this, running this business, that you have found your why? Yeah, I found, my I found my wife when I was five years old. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> love it. Was given to you. Yeah. Okay, I'm not, I wasn't born to work, or maybe I was born to work in the bakery. You never know my dad's plan. But yeah, it's, yeah, definitely, I'm, I'm content. Yeah. So, I mean, just because you mentioned your dad again, did your dad ever come in and say, you are going to work in the shop? Or was it just like, it was just a part of your life and you just ended up He didn't it. force it upon me. Yeah. But he could see I was interested. So I said to him when I was old enough, and my dad had us late. He was like um, 47 when I was born or something. Hmm. He had a slate. My mum was his second wife, but he didn't have any children from the first. But anyway, so he had a slate. So by the time I'm 19, my dad's like old, you know, he's in his 70s, touching 80. So I was like, I was going to university at the time. And he, he said, oh, I want your fees. I, mean, just, uh, I said, dad, like, he, he gave me like my, my, my first load of rent and whatever. And, and I was like, Dad, I don't, I don't want to be like living from your hands all my life. Like, let me come and work with you. So he's like, you want to work? Nah, don't worry. You don't need to work. It's okay. Dad, I want to work. <laughs> okay, come on Friday. <laughs> so, you know, I had to give him a push. So I came on Friday. So I was working for him for a little while. I started working, working. And I, I like, you know, I, I fell in love with the place even more. Like, it was always like, you know, an amazing place to visit when I was small. I used to like bake him, like, Dad, it's half term. I'm, I'm not going to school today. Take me, take me, you know. But like, 
I had the, I fell even more in, in love with the place. So why, why is that the yeah, case? Working... Why is that the case? Is it because you were given more? Why is that the case? Is it because you were given more responsibility? No, I just saw it with different eyes. I was older. I wasn't a child. Mm. You know, like there came a point where I wasn't pulling on my dad's arm to go to the bakery. I was going with my friends. I was going to the cinema. I was going bowling. I was going with goals. You know, I was, you know, it stopped for a period. Right. I became a teenager. Then I saw it through adults' eyes. So I, I found a new respect for it. Yeah. So anyway, I was working with working with him, and I did something, and I did something wrong. My dad liked to tell me off a lot. Like I, I got in more trouble than anybody there, and not not because I was so bad. I don't think. I think he wanted to shape me, and mold me into like being able to handle the responsibility and look after the place the way he wants it looked after. And the, you know, because he set it up. Let's be fair. Is what's you know, it's not broken. Don't fix it. I should continue in his footsteps. To an extent, you know, it's always a bit of Daniel Flair. But, you know, so if I did something, he said, I thought to make you manager, you don't know anything. You know, ah, I made the mistake. I'm so, what have I done? You never learn. You're never going to learn. I was like, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did he go, used to give you, let's say, business wisdom. So you Precisely. should speak in a certain like, way. Exactly that. But if, if I didn't fully grasp what he was trying to teach me, I, I get in trouble, you know, I get shouted at. <laughs> so, but I learned. <laughs> I learned because, you know, it's, I revered him. So, you know, if, if I disappointed him, I, I was, I, I wanted to prove him wrong. I wanted to show him that I could learn. So, yeah, I tried my best. What was the hardest les lesson you ever had to learn from him? I wouldn't say he's any hard lessons. Like, he, he, he breaks things down into a... a in a, in a simple way to, you know, puts things forward to you in a simple, if you look at it from a different perspective, like I said, outside the box. So I won't say it was difficult to learn. The difficulty was his Israeli. His English wasn't, even though he'd lived there for so many years, his communication wasn't the best. So he would explain something to me, but I wouldn't really understand fully what he was telling me because he'd use metaphors and things, you know, to explain what he was trying to tell me. And then after a while, it would click. Like, that's what he meant. I, I get it now. Like, and now being the director and, and, and having to do with different aspects that weren't really my concern, I was like, my dad always said this, and now I understand what he was saying. I actually, I get it, and he's right. Like, I, I see it. So, like, yeah, even, even he's still teaching me, even though he's gone, kind of thing. Like, <laughs> when you say just figuring out what he was telling me. <laughs> <laughs> When you say metaphors, it's a bit like the, is it like a bit like the parables that you find in the Bible? It's not always direct and it's a story about a lesson that you need to learn. Yeah, like something like that, yes. Uh, yes, exactly. Something like that. You know, mm. it, it, you know, when you're trying to converse with somebody in a different language, but you don't quite know all the words or the whole vocabulary. So you try to describe what you could say in a word. Yeah. I didn't always understand what he was describing. <laughs> <laughs> Are there particular metaphors? Well, because my dad understood them better than other people, but still. Yeah. <laughs> so you can speak this, you kind of speak Israeli then? I'm not Israeli. fluent. Yeah. I can speak a bit, but I'm not fluent. I wouldn't, like, I would go there and not get lost. And if I lived there, I would eventually become fluent. But no, I'm not. My mom was English. We spoke English in the house. What kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? Okay, so I don't know what legacy. I, I, think, I don't think legacy, like... A, a, a monument or like a building or another shop or whatever no I think more a memory of of me if, if people if people remember me in a good light that would, that would be great and what do you think are the most important qualities of a successful person I think it's good to be a little bit shrewd but not greedy honest and open and like upfront I don't think there's any point in trying to deceive somebody and then put for the proposition like seeing where someone you know like saying something to somebody to get something out of them, whatever, just say, look, this is what I think and what I'm offering. This is my proposition. It's honest and full on. Like if, if I tell you it's 10 pounds, it's 10 pounds. I'm not fishing for nine, it's 10, you know? And I'm also not looking for 12, it's 10, 10 is good. Let's be fair and honest. I think it goes a long way. I, I think you, you, you might not like, you know, some people, for example, if you put a house on the market, the agent will tell you it's worth 450, 450,000. So uh, let's go 500, you know, let's see, maybe someone will pay it. 
Like, all right, yeah, you might win, but then you also might. I guess the house isn't a good example, but I'm sitting in the house now, so a bike or so a sandwich, you know. Offer that offer that bike for ten pounds, you know. Someone eventually someone will come up to you and say, "Are you taking the Mickey out of me? Ten pounds for this? You trying to rob me? Almost like some people take offense, you know. How 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 do you have the cheek to ask me? No, be fair. Ask a fair price, you know." And I, th I think that goes a long way. My dad always did that, and we're busy. And how can people? <laughs> and how can people connect with you? Find out more about what you're doing, and also go to Bagovic. My personal phone number. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose um, they could go to your website, and that's the best way. Yeah, to I'm joking. Uh, we're building a new <laughs> website, so hopefully that will launch. And we want it to be a hub for everything to come in. But we do have an email address. We've got the shop phone number. And we're on Facebook Messenger and Instagram. Okay. So yeah, you can easily get into, I mean, we're, we're quite active now because of this new, our delivery service. We're quite active on Facebook Messenger. Yeah. And, and it's Instagram. Your, and it's, it's you're quite active on Twitter and Instagram. My wife helps every so often. I'll be fair. I don't really fully understand all of it. I just like, you know, ding. Okay. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not great. I'm getting there. You know, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm a professional. I can post things and pictures and, you know, I'm not backwards, but there are some people that, you know, they're obviously paid experts, like people in marketing that really get all of that. Mediocre. But yeah, if you message me, I'll, I'll reply. Twitter, I'm not a huge fan of. I haven't worked out Twitter yet, but I'm good on Instagram and Facebook.